So now we're going to run it. We can see now we get this point cloud. This is a really nice point cloud as we can see. Hey guys, I'm welcome to a new video in this point clouds tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about how we can actually like create point clouds from depth images. So we're going to get depth images from derivation setups uh, by using deep learning and so on. Then we're going to actually like create those uh, point or like convert those depth maps into point clouds with the own 3D library in this video. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server, I'll link to the down description here. You can come join the channel, chat us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel for a small monthly fee if you want to support the channel more than you're currently doing. And also if you have some problems in your projects and you want my uh, view on it and some expertise and, and some help with your projects, you can go become a member of the channel here. So thank you guys. So first of all here, we're just going to talk about like what this video here is about, how we can actually like get our depth maps and color images, how we just pass that to open 3D library. And then we just get out a point cloud that we can then use all the operations on that we've been through in the previous videos and in the upcoming videos in this tutorial here um, as well. So first of all here, we can see we have these depth maps that we can actually convert to point clouds. So on the image here, we have this depth map to the right and then we have a grayscale image of an, of an, uh, of an RGB image just from the environment. So we have this table here with some different kind of objects uh, laying on the table. It, this is just a data set that we're going to use throughout this video. We're going to look at a couple of different data sets. And then in the next video, we're actually like going to take our own images from either our stereo camera or like by using deep learning to actually like create these depth maps. The only thing we need is a depth map and a corresponding color map uh, of that depth map or like that image that we created a depth map from. Then we just pass those two images to the open 3D library here and it will actually just spit out uh, a point cloud of the environment that we can then use to do all our operations on. So these are two images here. This is just an example. And then the output here will actually like be this point cloud. We pass in these two, two images and we'll get a point cloud out here that we can do our operations on. This is just a 2D image of our point cloud. We can see we get all the details about all the different kind of objects that is laying on, on top of the table, the chairs, the, the depth in the image and so on. And we can actually like reconstruct a uh, whole like rooms, uh, environments and so on. So these are two videos that where we talked about like how we can actually like create point clouds either by using like depth maps or stereo vision. So we can actually like use deep learning to use only a monocular camera to get a depth map, usually in, in, in one dimensional or like when we only have one camera or, or like a monocular camera, we have no information about the depth um, in our image. Um, so we actually like need two cameras to be able to get the information about the depth, but we can use deep learning to actually like estimate a depth map of our, of our image but only using a monocular camera. So we'll have videos about those. Make sure to check those out before we will go into the next one, into the next video where we're going to use those videos and the theory, the code from those videos. And then we're going to use it together with the open 3D library to actually like create these point clouds that we can do all the operations on. We're going to do all the operations on our own point, clou point clouds. So it's easier for you guys to convert it to your own projects and applications. Where in these videos here, I'm just showing the examples how we can actually like use the library so we get comfortable with using the library and then we're going to combine everything. So we're now turning into a Jupyter notebook here where we're going to go through this example on how we can use the R RGB D images where we have RGB channels and then we also have a channel for the depth uh, with our images. First of all, we need to import these different kind of modules as in all the other videos throughout this point cloud tutorial. So we're just going to load in the modules um, in our Jupyter notebook. Then we have our RGB D images here. So we can see that we have a data structure for uh, images here in open 3 library too. Then we have a various number of functions. We have read image, write image. We can fill the image and we can even like draw the image. And here we can just see that from open 3D, it actually uses NumPy. So we can easily be uh, uh, manipulated, do operations from NumPy and convert it to and from NumPy arrays. And we can see we also have this RGB D image, which is composed into two images as we just went over in the slides. So we need, need both a depth image and a corresponding color image uh, for that depth image or like that image that we created our depth map from. So here we've created two images to be registered uh, into the same camera frame and have the same resolution. So we're going to take the same image from the same camera because we also need the camera's intrinsic parameters so I can like be able to create the point cloud from the depth map. So down here, we're going to use a number of uh, different data sets. So we can just see some different data sets, how we can use these images and then how we can create the point cloud and see it. So the first data set here that we're going to use is the Redwood data set, 
we can see here that we actually like have this um, section here which is just reading and visualizing and RGB the image from this Redwood dataset. We can see that the depth is stored in a 16-bit single channel image. The integer values represent the depth measured in millimeters. So this is really important uh, when we're talking about like how we can convert our depth actually like into um, into real life or like the, the world coordinate system. Uh, because here we can see that the integer values is in millimeters. So our depth is in millimeters. It could be centimeters, it could also be meters. So we need to make sure of that. And here we can just see that this is the default format. Uh, for Open3D to pass depth images. So if we had our own, uh, if we have our own depth map, we, we will need to actually like have this uh, default or like convert it to this default format. So we need to make sure of that when we're going to create our own depth maps and actually like use it here with Open3D library. We're just going to go down here and actually like we have this read image as we just went through. So we have a read image and read image and we're just going to read an image in from this path from the test data set. I'll just go into the directory here. So inside of here, we go into RGBD and then we have these other formats here and then we can see these different kind of um, these different kind of like um, images here that we can actually like load in and create the depth maps from. So the first one here we actually need to go into the color and depth and then we're just going to take the, the zero um, Im image. So this will be inside here and then color zero zero. So this will be the color image of the depth map that we're or like the depth map that we're going to create and then from that depth map the actual uh, point cloud so the other this was the color image and also the, the depth image here is this here so we can actually like not see anything in this uh, example here but when we read it in and use the functions uh, it will convert those depths here into the actual like, image we also may have some other examples um, as well that we can use but we're just going to take the first image so we're going to read those in into our um, actual like script here. So we have our color raw image and we have our depth raw image. And then we just read in those two images, pass it through this RGB the image. So we're going to create this class or like this data structure here that we know of. So we have this image that, that consists of two images, the color image and the depth image. Then we're just going to create this, uh, like call this function here, create from color and depth. We pass in the color image and the depth image. And then we're just going to create our RGB the image. And then we can just print that out here. So we're going to run this block of code. We can see that we are using the Redwood dataset, RGB image size, we can see the image size and also the channel. So we have one channel for our color image, 60, 6, uh, 640 by 480, kind of like default, um, like size of our images or like image dimensions. We're also going to use this dimen these dimensions when we're going to create our own data sets. And we can see that we're using NumPy as array to access the buffer data. Down here, we can actually like show our actual like depth map with matplotlib. So the default conversion function create RGBD image from color and depth creates and this like as we know consisting of a color and depth map, and the color is converted into a grayscale image, and we're normalizing our values or like standardizing our values to, uh, from zero to one, and the depth image is, is stored in floats. So now we can just go down here and actually like use matplotlib um, to to draw our color image and also our depth image. But our color image will actually like be grayscaled uh, now when we created this RGBD image uh, data structure. So if we run it here, we can see that we get this output uh, where we have the image here grayscale, and then we have our depth corresponding depth map over here to the right. So we can see here that the depth actually like changes the further we come away from uh, like the foreground of our image, and then we can see the background here is actually like lighter. So uh, the, the darker in this example here, the darker it is, like the closer it is to the camera where in some of the other videos we actually like have brighter pixels closer to the camera and the further you could go away from the camera like the darker the pixels uh, will be but here we can create or like we can convert the actual like RGB the image and we can convert that into a point cloud but when we need to do that we actually like need to know the camera's uh, intrinsic parameters so we need to know the focal length and also the optical center of our camera to be able to actually like project those points out to a point cloud uh, captured by that camera so down here we can create this from RGBD images. So we have our actual like point cloud. Then we need to pass in our RGBD image and also the, the, this camera um, parameters. So we need to create this data structure here, the pinhole camera intrinsic. And then we need to pass in the actual like intrinsic parameters for a camera. In this example here, we're just going to have this prime sense camera default intrinsic uh, intrinsic parameters for this camera that is used for this data set here. When we're going to create it for our own data set captured by our own camera we will need to specify our own intrinsic parameters so we will need to do camera calibration 
uh, before we're actually like, uh, doing these things and passing in the camera's intrinsic parameters. So again, make sure you watch all those videos that we're talking about, like both how we can camera calibrate our cameras, what's the intrinsic parameters of the camera, extrinsic parameters, and how we can actually like use stereo revision to get like depth information in, in the image and also how we can use deep learning if you only have a monocular -like camera to get the same depth estimation or like at least a, like an estimation of the depth in our image. So here we're going to flip it, otherwise the point cloud will be upside down. So we're just going to have this transformation where we just have a minus one here, um, minus ones here in our transformation matrix that will just flip the point cloud uh, when we're doing that, that transformation. So to actually like transform or like rotate and translate a point cloud, uh, we're just going to have this point cloud dot transform. And then we just have our, first of all here, like the first three columns here, or like the first three uh, elements in like three by three in our matrix here would actually like be the rotation matrix. And then the last uh, column in our, um, in our matrix here, or like on transformation matrix will be the translation. Then we're just going to draw our geometries um, where we just pass in the point cloud direct like one to draw. So we're going to hit shift enter and it will actually like create this point cloud here as we can see from our depth image and the color. So this is the same point cloud as we've seen in all the other videos that we talked about. So this is just one color image and a depth map that we just pass into these functions and then it just creates this point cloud with all the, with all the points. We can then do and apply all the operations that we've been through throughout this point cloud tutorial. So just to show you some other different kind of examples, we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're just going to run the blocks of code, see, see the different kind of data sets, the differences between the data sets, and then we're just going to see the outputs because the functions is the exact same one as we just went through. We have a color image, depth image, we pass it through the function, and then we just um, pass in the cameras and intrinsic parameters, display the images, and then the result, like the resulting point cloud. So now we're going to use the sun data set. We're just going to access it again here. We have the same image dimensions. We're going to plot it. So now we can see we have this like kind of like office here where we have some doors. Uh, we have like a hallway here. We have some uh, uh, shelves over here to the right, it, it seemed like. So, and then we have the corresponding um, depth, uh, depth map here. So we can see that we actually have a change in the intensity here of the depth, the further we come away from the camera. So this is perfect. Down here, we're just going to create our actual -like point cloud and visualize it uh, again, again as of above. So now we're going to run it. We can see now we get this point cloud. This is a really nice point cloud as we can see. We get all the points here reprojected out, creating our point cloud. We can see the door, really nice representation. We also get like uh, all the shelves here and, and the hallway here. And we can even see like, we just lose information here at the back because they will just be like infinity away from the camera but we get a really nice representation even if we see like from the from the side here this is a really nice representation of a point cloud and if we had some more images from our actual like environment here we can actually like stitch all the point clouds together and reconstruct a whole environment by just using uh, by just using uh, color images together with depth images from different kind of view angles stitch them together and we can reconstruct a whole environment so the last example here that we're going to go through is the NYU dataset. We're just going to do the exact same thing. We just have some other different kind of things here. We won't go into it like that. Uh, we want to go into details what these things here does. We can see this is a special functions used for reading this uh, PDM format because this is just another format. The other uh, images from the other data sets were just PNGs, but this is PDM format. And then we need to convert that into an, an actual like, image that we can use in the OM3D library. Again, we're just going to pass in create um, create this RGB image from um, like we're just going to create the uh, image here, print it again. We're just going to plot it here as well. So we can see now we have another like kind of office. We have a bit more details. We have a room here. We have a, a bit more details over here to the left. Then we're going to create our point cloud. And then we can see our point cloud again here where we get like the other room here through the door. We don't have any information about what is going on behind here because we can't see that from our camera angle or like a camera view. We get all the details over here to the left as we saw in the image. And also like the relative distance between the points is actually like really, really good when we're creating these point clouds. The last data set here that we can go through is the Tom data set. Again, it is not just another example. We're just going to plot the images. We have this desk here as I showed you in the slides. So this is just not really that exciting as all the others. We have already seen it. But again, we're just going to have it. 
we can rotate it here around, see all the details. We get it down to like millimeters uh, precision between the points. So it is really nice, really, really, really precise and accurate point clouds that we get um, from these data sets here. When we're going to create our own point clouds from our own data sets and our own images, we will have a, a bit more noise and we will, we will not get like that good, like these like these results here, but they will still be fairly good as you're going to see in the upcoming videos here um, on the channel. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. So you will get a notification when I upload a new video in this tutorial here about point clouds or computer vision and deep learning. If you want to know more details about the things that we went through this video here with basic inbound operations, camera calibrations, stereo visions, and so on, I'll link to the computer vision tutorial up here or else under the CMX for you guys. Bye for now.